y'all. Time for another Tomes of Terror. Now, the book I'm going to be talking about this time, this is interesting because I think this is the first time that somebody in the YouTube comments of one of my other Tomes of Terror videos like recommended a book. And I'm pretty sure I never, I mean, the guy's name sounds familiar, but I don't think I've ever read anything of his before. Um, so this was the book that was recommended and it is Asylum by Patrick McGrath. Now this came out in 1997. Uh, Patrick McGrath is a British writer. So this is uh, set in the UK. It's also set in, I believe it's set in 1959. I don't remember if they said in the book like outright that that's when it was said, but when I looked it up like on Wikipedia and stuff like that's generally like when this is set. Now I will say this is a, I would call it like a gothic thriller more than like a horror horror type of thing. It's more like on the psychological end of things. And um, I will say at the outset, it is very, very bleak. It is very depressing. But that said, I found it like really, really compelling, even though like a lot of the stuff that happens in it I don't want to say it's like melodrama necessarily, but there's like a lot of kind of crazy shit goes on in this. And, um, you know, it's a little bit, it's, it's kind of like overwrought or over the top, but that's kind of what Gothic literature is. So I'm not really, you know, all that bothered where I'm criticizing it for that because it is like within the constraints of that genre. Um, and also another thing that I figured that I found out was that I guess in 2005, they did a film adaptation of this. Uh, and had like Natasha Richardson in it. I think like Sir Ian McKellen was in it. And it sounded like good. But then when I went to the Wikipedia page and it sounded like it stuck pretty close to the book, except for the end was a little bit different. But uh, apparently it got like savaged by critics. They just said it was terrible. And it's just like, it was just a, a horrible like adaptation of the novel. So now I kind of want to see it like just to see like what, how could it be that bad? Like with those good actors in it? I don't really know. So what this book is about, as I said, it's set in the UK. I think it's in the late 50s or early 60s uh, was the impression that I got. So there's this married couple, Max and Stella Raphael. And Max Raphael gets a job at this mental hospital that's kind of, I mean, they're from London and they're kind of like very urbane and everything. Um, this hospital is kind of a little bit out of the way, like not super far from London, but it's a little bit out in the sticks. So um, Stella is like apparently not super happy that they've had to leave their kind of city life behind and now they're out here, you know, on this farm or whatever. But they give the family a house. They also have a son named Charlie, who I believe is uh, nine or 10 years old. So they kind of try to settle in, like Max settles into his job and Stella just kind of like hangs out, you know what I mean? Because she doesn't really have much of anything. She does like, they don't have a house, they have a housekeeper, but it's like she does most of the shit herself, like cleaning and cooking and everything, you know, like a, like a stay at home wife would have done back then. Now it comes to pass that this uh, particular patient who is at the hospital named Edgar Stark, he is an artist and he is also, um, they say that he's like schizophrenic or something, but he's also like really violent. He has been institutionalized because he basically um, killed his wife, Ruth, like in a really, really horrific way, which I won't spoil. But um, yeah, so he killed his wife and he got institutionalized. Now, he also does like construction and he's like a really good handyman and stuff. So it comes to pass that Edgar is... Um, he starts working and restoring this, I think it's like a greenhouse or something like that. That's like on the property of the house that, um, that Max and Stella are living in. Cause like I said, it's like, it's all on the same grounds, I guess. Cause there's like the hospital and then like whoever is working there, like, you know, the superintendent or what have you, they have their own like quarters, like their own house on the grounds and they can do what they want with it. So Max like gets it into his head. He's like, oh, we need to restore the garden and we need to restore the greenhouse. So they hire Edgar Stark to do it or they have because they have him kind of on a day program because they think that it's going to help him out. Now, I will mention that pretty much this entire book is narrated. And I thought this was like an interesting um, choice. It's narrated from the point of view of Peter Cleave, 
who is another psychiatrist that works at this hospital. And Edgar Stark is his patient. And he's also friends with Max and Stella. So it's kind of interesting because you're seeing these events unfold like through someone else's eyes, but who has knowledge of like the shit because he's a psychiatrist and he understands like the reasons why people are doing things. And also because him and Stella are such good friends, like, you know, later on as the shit really starts to hit the fan, um, she like starts confiding in him, like about her feelings and things. So he kind of like gets inside of her head um, also. So I thought that was a really interesting narrative choice. I really dug it. I think it, because I think it gave... Because like I said, the stuff that happens, it's very, it's a very gothic novel in the sense that, you know, the stuff that happens is like, I don't want to say it's wildly unbelievable because I have heard of things like this happening, but it is a little bit like melodramatic or like overwrought. So I think it's cool that you almost have like the stuff described from like one remove. In that way, it kind of reminded me of like Anne River Siddons, maybe. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing her name, last name right. I pronounce it different every time I say it. Like her her uh, book, The House Next Door, which, you know, had all these kind of like overwrought elements in it. But the way that it's told is so like matter of fact that it just seems like you that you just like go along with it. So this kind of like reminded me of that a little bit. So basically what ends up happening, Edgar Stark, this violent, uh, not necessarily a psychopath, but he's not right. Okay. Um, So he's working on the greenhouse, like by the, you know, the Raphael household and Stella being bored with her boring ass husband, she decides she's going to get a little piece of that psychopath over there unwisely as it turns out. Um, so they start an affair. Like I said, I don't really want to spoil, like, what the fuck happens in this book. But let's just say that shit does not go well at all. She ends up pretty much ruining several lives. People die. It's just, like, just because she wanted, like, some new dick. And she apparently got really, really into Edgar Stark, even though she knew that he was like a psycho and what she knew what he had done to his previous wife. But she just like his his artistic temperament and all this other kind of stuff. And she was just about it. You know what I mean? So it was like very passionate. And it seemed like maybe he was feeling the same shit, but it's hard to tell because like I said, this is told from the point of view of Peter Cleave, who was the psychiatrist who knows all of them and like was sort of like tangentially involved in like the whole situation. So you're getting like a little bit of an outsider's perspective, but an outsider that actually kind of knew what was going on and knew what was going on in people's heads. But that said, the really interesting thing about this book is that it's got like a lot of layers going on. Because like I said, you don't know, these are all psychiatrists and people that are like, you know, that know psychiatrists. So I feel like, I don't want to say it's necessarily like an unreliable narrator situation, but they kind of, it's kind of left open for that interpretation because it could be that particularly Stella, who's kind of like the focus of most of the, I mean, that's who they're usually following and that's who he's usually talking about. Um, And he kind of gets inside her head. But the more it goes on, the more you're kind of like, well, is he like seeing her psychologically correctly? Like, is he really, you know, getting into any insight into what her feelings are or what her reasoning is for doing the crazy shit that she does, which ends up like ruining all these people's lives? Or is he just being manipulated? You know what I mean? Because she kind of she's married to a psychiatrist, she's friends with psychiatrists, and she kind of knows what's going on. um, And she knows, like what they what particular things they would be looking for and stuff. So it's almost kind of like everybody in this book is like manipulating somebody else. But you're not entirely sure. You're never entirely sure when it's happening or what you know what I mean. So it's kind of like that. It's like a really intriguing psychological study of, let's be honest, a lot of really, really unlikable people. I mean, but that's not a ding against the book, though, that everybody in this book, particularly Stella, who is like the main character, even though in some ways, I guess you could call her a victim, because like I said, I feel like all the men in this book are kind of like manipulating her. 
But she's kind of manipulating people too. It's kind of hard to say because her thought processes processes, and like why she ends up doing the shit that she does. And then particularly like later on, like when everything has come like fucking crashing down, just like her entire world and everybody else's world, like, you know, in this little small pocket of wherever, she almost seems like she doesn't really give a shit. You know what I mean? And it's, she's just like very, but the thing about it though, is that she might be like suffering from depression also. So it's like, it's almost like she can't, like it's an illness and she can't control like the way she feels about shit. So she's a, she's a hard character to like. She's a hard character to root for because the shit that she does and the shit that she says, like to Peter Cleave, the guy that's narrating the book, um, about why, like how she feels about what she did and all this other stuff, it makes you really kind of hate her. But then, because she just seems like a horrible person. But then on the other hand, you can kind of see too, like when you step back, like after I finished the book and I was like thinking about it and then like I read some other people's like um, takes on it and shit like that. And I was like, when you kind of start thinking about the story, you're kind of like, maybe, like I said, I don't want to call her the victim, um, because she had agency, she knew what she was doing, but it's almost kind of like everybody in this book was shitty and it's almost kind of like she didn't know like how to react to that situation because they were all trying to manipulate her into particular things. Also, I mean, Edgar Stark, even though you could say maybe he did love her, they don't, you know, you don't really know, but you know, he might've been manipulating her, you know, for his own ends, you know, which comes to pass later in the book. Max, he didn't seem like actively hostile toward her, but he for sure was like neglectful. Like he didn't really, you know, that it's like they heart, they never had sex. He didn't really like pay attention to her or anything like that. So you can understand why she would be like looking elsewhere. But that said, you can also like be pissed off at her at how like catastrophically wrong her choice of man was um, because it just ended up like, it's just horrible, horrible consequences. That's all I'm going to say. So as I said, if you're into gothic literature, and like I said, this is like a classic gothic psychological thriller character study type of thing, not necessarily a horror novel, but it is the consequences of the shit that happens is horrific. Um, and it's just like tragic and bleak and hopeless and just like terrible things happen in it. And it will kind of make you feel bad and like make you feel shitty. Um, so if that sounds like something that you would enjoy, if that's the right word to use, um, then probably you will love this. I really, really liked it. I mean, it's not long. I think it's only about 250 pages. And I read it like, I think in just two sittings, um, just because I found like, like I said, even though the characters are like all kind of really, really deeply shitty, um, other than the kid, he's all right. All the characters are so shitty, but they're, but you can't stop like watching them. And it's all, you know what I mean? It's like a slow motion car crash type of thing. This is what the, the <laughs> that's what this book is like. It's like watching a car crash in slow motion and you just can't look away. So it's, it's like that kind of vibe. So if that sounds like that would be your cup of tea, then by all means, pick this up. Like I said, it came out in 1997. Uh, they made a movie about it. Uh, they made a movie adaptation of it in 2005, which has some like big actors in it, but apparently like got shit on uh, by critics. I'm not entirely sure why. It might be terrible. I don't know. I'll have to check it out. Also, somebody told me that the audiobook had been narrated by Sir Ian McKellen because some of the people on uh, Goodreads had actually read the audiobook. So uh, that might be worth checking out too if you're into audiobooks because he has like such a lovely voice. But yeah, so. So I would really like, I can't remember who it was that, um, that recommended this book and this author, but, uh, thank you very much because I really, really did like this book a lot. Um, I understand it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. Like I said, it will make you feel really, really bad. And, uh, it's very, very depressing and you're spending time with like some deeply fucked up and unlikable people. But that said, it was its own the psychology in it is really fascinating. It was like really fascinating to me. So if that sounds like something like just a deep dive into like a terrible person's psyche as they just ruin everyone's lives around them, then I would recommend this book. If that does not sound like fun, then probably you will not because this is not a fun book. I'm just saying that right now. Um, but I really, really, I was really, really into it. 
And uh, I'll definitely be checking out some more. I'm pretty sure I've never read any of his other stuff, even though, like I said, his name sounds familiar. I'll have to go back and look on my shelves because I've read so much shit I can't like remember. But uh, but yeah, definitely check it out if it sounds like your kind of thing. And uh, that'll do it for this episode. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye. <laughs>